Richter. Or not Travis Richter. What am I looking at? Oh, here we here we go. What are we, what? How do I even begin? What is this? Are you gonna speak? Can Can you see me? I do. I see something. Are you a, like a Are you a koala bear? I don't. I can't tell what the heck you are. Wait, you can see me right now. I do. Wait, you're. Oh, you're supposed to be camouflaged. I get it, but I can see your eyes. You can see me. Yeah. Point. <laughs> Zero what? stars on Amazon. What's the joke? What is, What are you What are you supposed to be? This is just you know my mask for coronavirus. My buddy who lives uh, next to me wore a horse mask into Seven Eleven, and they refused him service. He, they said that's not an accurate mask. You wear gloves too. I just wear these for fun now. I just like them. No, I don't wear gloves. I probably should. Yeah, I just actually ran to my car. That's why I put them on. What's up, Travis? It's, it's a little German fested around here. I, I was trying to look up the last time we hung out. I think it was like 2011 with Human Abstract. Might even be 2010. I forgot we did that with THA. No, I was telling the viewers before we started, you came over with every band from First to Last, The Color of Violence, and Human Abstract. I love that. Yeah, we've had like quite a history together. We've been hanging out for a while. I think we always have fun. I, you and Matt good together in the room is obviously the most fun, but I think we still we can still pull off a fun show with Adam. Yeah, I, I miss him actually. We, doing interviews with him was a was a a lot of fun. Um, man, I haven't seen you in forever. Here I am. How do I yeah. look? You look good, man. I like your mustache. Thank you. This is a quarantine mustache. So you're doing the like facial hair of some type. I've never, I've never tried this before in my life. Uh, it was a dare because I've always shaved after day three. To me, day three was like, oh, my God, it's such a long mustache. But this is like month three. And now I know what a real mustache is supposed to look like. Yeah, I can't grow a mustache that's a little blonde. And um, I have a nervous habit where I kind of chew on my mustache and, like, bite it with my teeth. I've been doing that 100%. I, I, I've never, I, I do that all day. I, I understand how annoying it is. Do you trim your mustache or do you chew it with your teeth and that keeps it even? I have a whole kit. It has like a little scissor and some like balm and like a, like a, like a, like a, like, a, like a, almost like body wash for it. That's tight. Yeah. Um, but your hair is nice. You've always had long hair. I don't think I've ever seen you with short hair. Yeah, I, I grew it out and then I was, I just decided to really be a long hair guy for life, I think. Your, your back, sorry, your background is like bothering me. It looks like you're on the, the set of like the Purge Part Seven. Like, what what are we looking at I'm behind my, you? I'm in the office of my at the uh, the music venue in uh, L.A. that I told you about. Oh, it's tell the viewers funny. this is actually really cool that you that you that you're doing this. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm just here kicking it. I like get out of the. I can't sit in the house for too long. I, I start getting stir crazy, so I just will come here and um, work. I, I have like a studio here. And then a studio at my house. I just kind of jumped back and forth and been working on a lot of music. And today I just came in. I brought my cats today. Awesome. They need to get uh, out of the house too. What's uh, What's the studio? I want the viewers to know. You you own like, this is like a, a, a serious operation you have in downtown. It is a serious operation. It's probably like the most uh, like legit serious thing I've ever done. Because um, I, I, even I've heard of it. When you said the name of your place, I knew what it was. Yeah, we've been blessed with a lot of great bookings and epic shows, and um, a lot of people rep us, and just, it was like an adventure. I went on with a couple buddies. We just decided, like, um, we were throwing some parties in an old warehouse, kind of like a few years back in the Arts District area, kind of, like, yeah. more towards the end, though, not like, uh, where it was still kind of crazy, and um, we were like, we were like, all right, we can book the crap out of this place let's try to go do it legit and so it took a couple years but i've literally just never done anything like uh like mess with the city quite like we did you know like permits and liquor licenses and city planners and you sound you sound so mature yeah it definitely uh aged me um but it was cool like i, I was excited for one it was like a, a fun project to do in la such a big market it's already like if you told someone, oh, I'm going to open a venue in L.A., they're like, hey, no, maybe not, because we have enough. There's a lot of venues here. But 
we want to do something different. So, um, I don't know. It's, just, it's been really good. It's actually how I met almost all the guys in um, If I Die First. Yes. With, with right, right. It kind of it kind of served as a purpose to have me meet a bunch of people um, that are kind of current and active in music now, you know. Um, so um, that was that was a fun opportunity to get to have that again. I was out of the game for a minute. Um, we all leave the game at some point. I was out yeah, of this game. Yeah, I, I was like, what am I doing? I was out here. I was like acting and then i was just what what did you act in did i see you in I, anything oh my god i acted in a uh in a probably mini, the purge in a mini cooper commercial that's awesome yeah yeah um i'm singing the darkness uh do you believe in a thing called love that's amazing and there's this like famous skateboarding bulldog in it Wait, were you? Was it your voice, or you were just lip syncing to the darkness song? Uh, it was my voice, but it was kind of like I played the character of someone, kind of like getting off work and not knowing the words of the song, just kind of like in the oh. car, like minding their own business, you know. I uh, get like it. Their own world. I was, I was picturing you. I was picturing you as like the Dr. Pepper guy, like the sweet one, you know. That would like I would love to have like gotten you know you're like the the progressive lady, you know, like yeah. where you like they bring you back for tons of commercials. That's like what. It's like hitting the lottery. That's very rare. So, very, you, very you, so you were not the next flow. No, I only did one. But the Mini Cooper people were like, you're really good at this. I was like, thanks. That was a good compliment, considering I had never really done any of that stuff before. I mean, I've made music videos with FFTL, um, THA and stuff. but And there's some acting in those, you know, when you're not just doing like a performance video. Yeah, the latest plague has some acting. I'm like, but it's all like a... Uh, what is it? What do they call it? Um, when you like respond to something, you just kind of give them a look, you know. You're not I don't. Hey, you're the you're the actor. I don't know what it's called. You tell I me. I don't know what it's called. I'm not an actor. Please God, I'm not an actor. Um, but uh, yeah, just I did that for a while, and then I was like, you know, I miss music so much, and I wanted to get back in it somehow. And um, yeah, I don't know. Just open this place, and then I was like, started bugging these guys like Zubin. He's uh, one of the singers in our band, and I was like, we had met a couple times, and I was like, yo, let me mix some of your stuff. Let me do some studio work for you. And he was like, sure. And so I just started kind of like weaseling my way into their little scene they have here in L.A. And um, next thing I know, we're all just kicking it. And Ned, my homie, he like is the main songwriter. He writes most of the music in it by that first. He was kind of looking for places to jam and talking about wanting to start a band. And um, we share a lot of the same influences and like a lot of the same bands. And we DJ Emo Night together. Um, you know, we got a vibe. We strike up a vibe. And so he started writing this music and demoing it. And it was just pretty much like guitars and vocal. And I was like, hey, send me these files. Because I think I could mix all this and make it sound really legit. And... Um, he sent me one and I worked on it and pretty much when we when we finished that first demo we were like yeah we we, we, we knew it was going to be like a real project we were all going to be passionate about um, and it was just fun it was like fun to like strike up that vibe again I felt like almost like I was wondering like can you create that that sound from that era um, is yeah. that recreatable really you know is that yeah. just because we didn't know what we were doing? We were all just kids back in the day and kind of like making like great mistakes that all like sounded like, you know, it ended up getting labeled as scene music. But it's cool. Like we get together and we all have our kind of the same goals. And so making the music is pretty sick. Like, you know, we got done with the EP, like writing it. Ned wrote it in like a month, which is kind of really fast. Um, Back in the day, it took us a long time to demo and make all the music and stuff. But well, you didn't have the writing master back technology then. Technology now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't, I don't want to make you sound like an old man, but I don't, I don't know the other guys in this band. Are they uh, in our age demographic? Would you say, or are these a younger bunch of guys you're working They're with? Probably like a generation under me. Um, wow. Well, I mean, geez, I'm old, but but you know what? I don't <laughs> I don't drink really and i sleep minimum eight hours a night so i feel like you know when we take pictures 
Yeah. It was like 70% of the pictures where I looked old, but there was a solid like 20 to 30% <laughs> where I was like, hey, I'm keeping up with these guys. Like I'm looking almost like <laughs> on the same age level. That's but, good. Uh, yeah, you know. No makeup required, right, for your photo shoots? I probably should have used some, but, you know. But you didn't. You just naturally I, I have it, that. I kept it raw. You yeah. have that youthful glow about you. Have that youthful glow. <laughs> um, um, so, so like yeah, I the said, other guys, like, they're, they're not necessarily um, from our age bracket necessarily, but, um, but they're not they're like, like, in, like, you know, parallel adjacent to the world we came up in musically. Um, Lotus is signed to Epitaph. And, you know, Epitaph was, uh, you know, big part of FFC of past, you know? Yeah. And I still keep up with them. I love them a lot. They come through the venue, the Epitaph people sometimes. And it's really been a hub. I really like, have to thank my lucky stars. And You're missing partner. a good opportunity. I keep trying yeah. to get you to say the name of the place, and you haven't. It doesn't have a name. I thought it does, where you put the shows on. It does. It's, it's 1720. It's yeah. just our address, you know. But I, for but a I, while, but I, but I've heard of that. Name. We were like, we don't have a name. It's just the address. And we would just give people the address. Like, oh, what's the name of the venue? 1720 East 16th Street. But that's but then, cool. Uh, but then it got too wordy. And, like, our Instagram handle started, like, you know, getting popular. People just started calling us 1720. They named it. The fans named it. Ah, that's what I meant. Because I have a friend, and he said, oh, I'll be in L.A. tonight. I'm going to a metal show at 1720. And I said, I've tonight? never heard it. No, a while ago. But I said I've never heard of that before, and that's how I found out about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to come to a show one day when we're allowed to um, hang out again. Why are we not? Oh, I was going to say, why are we not allowed? Oh, I'll get, I'll buy some gloves and we could virtual high five. Social distancing. Are you going to go to a social distance concert? That's the question. That's really the hot item right now to talk about. Wait, you broke up the social. You mean the the concert in your car that they're going to have? No, that's only in Europe. I think. Oh, you mean oh, you mean like uh like uh what like a concert where you have to stand six feet away from everybody? Yeah, you have, have you been to Target yet or anything? Um, I don't know. You got it. Well, you know, for me, Green Day is the only band where I have to be like right in the front in the pit. Everybody else, I can stand in the back. I don't but, care, I guess. But have you been to a Target lately? Or like, I've been you know, to like, no, oh, no. I go to like the grocery store every couple they days. Put like these stickers on the ground, you know, they tell you where to stand, kind of. No, I yeah, I've done all that. Yeah, I think that's how it'll be at concerts. So it's going to be like you're buying tickets to stand somewhere. In a I, don't, I mean, maybe we should just take a trip to Europe and go to that, that driving concert. That sounds fun. It seemed weird. Would you I, do it? I, I, only just, if it was Green Day and you're I have, in your car. No, I'm just thinking about, the, I'm thinking about how terrible it would be to get. It's bad enough when you leave a, like a show with your car, like in a big lot, like at a stadium. Imagine like trying to put your car into the place ahead of time if you want like a good spot to see the band. It would yeah, be really – like, you'd have to line up, like, 12 hours early like you do to go to a show, but, like, with your car just so you can get, like, a good spot up close to the stage. I imagine, like uh, – so, a couple things. Do the cars stay cranked? Well, at a drive-in, I think you have to, right, to hear the radio? To so get there's, the... a lot of, uh, there's a lot of um, exhaust. And can you open your window or like you have to well, like, would you it? want to, would you die of carbon monoxide? Because literally you're surrounded by 300 cars less than a foot away from each other that are pouring out carbon monoxide. So I'm wondering about that part. They're keeping it cranked. And so then I'm like, okay, are they honking their horns during the show? I don't know. Sorry, I'm laughing at Paxton. Can we talk about the band? I don't think Paxton knows what kind of interviews I usually do. There's usually yeah. about 30 minutes of nonsense and then 10 minutes of uh, talking about the band. We can talk about the band more. What is well, it? We're going to mix it up. We'll, we'll, we'll ask him a question later. Yeah. Well, Paxton just wants to know everything. He wants to know I, everything. I want to talk about car concerts. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess I, would, I guess I would do anything once. Like, uh, they're talking about this weekend here in L.A. You can drive your car through the Grove. Like, you know how usually the tram goes through the Grove? You can drive your car through the Grove and get, like, food. Bizarre. That's kind of cool. And and Mel's Drive-In is doing, like, what Sonic does, where you can go to Mel's, and now they do the car hop thing, like, back in the day. You can get your food at your car. As one of the industries that's totally not allowed to come back and probably won't come back last, I really loathe all the people who are trying to enjoy this time. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm watching Hulu at home, and it's all these commercials, and it's like, you're doing your part. Thanks. You're a hero. Thank, <laughs> your, thank your heroes. Like, it, like 
And then they're like, Buick. Like, what does that have to do with cars? I don't know. It's, it's strange. They're just thanking you. Yeah. It's, just I take the know, take the compliment. Yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not feeling it. I just want to get back, get my venue back open, so that if I die first, can play some shows. Did you? Have, did you even play a show or not yet? We haven't played a show yet. No, we've jammed. Um, here we have. I have like a little space at the venue where we can like rock out and jam. Um, we practiced a couple times, but nothing serious yet. Just been writing. We're pretty much done, man. Oh, now you have to wait. That sucks. But like. I can yeah, play the, you some snippets so you get an idea. Yeah, the the other guys, tell me about them. I'm guessing they they come from other projects because it do. seems, it seems like you guys are like the biggest band without having a song out. Yeah, exactly. We're like <laughs> a huge band right now, already famous. Is this um, like an all star band? Like, a, like, a, like kind of like, like an all star band, but it's cool because usually your all star bands, it's other bands, but really with this, it's kind of like um, a few producers and singers and rappers. Oh, it's cool. Kind of like, are on that like underground um, rap kind of thing, coming in and stepping in, and with me and a couple dudes who are also in another band. So it's it's this dude Rake on bass, and he plays bass for this guy Ghostmane. Okay. And then there is a drummer named Kale, and he also plays drums for Ghostmane. So we got Ghostmane's rhythm section. Sorry, Ghostmane, we have your rhythm section now. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, and then you got Ned, who is like, you know, producer and just like makes tons of badass music and writes music all the time. And we've worked on a bunch of stuff together. And he DJs. He's DJed at the venue a bunch. Always throws like release parties here for his stuff. Um, then like Zubin. Zubin's my guy. He, I, I mix a lot of his stuff. I've mixed like a couple of his EPs. And, um, I just love that guy. I love him. I wish he was here right now. I want him to be in this. I wish we could yeah. uh, split it three ways and he could come in. And That's that's Zoom, man. And Zoom doesn't have very good sound. Zoom doesn't have good. I mean, I, I used it the other day for a Minecraft meeting. Well, the, that's, 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 that's important. To be, have, that has to be done. So. It was cool. Um, um, and then finally, we got Lotus. Um, and he is another like vocalist kind of... Um, solo kind of guy and you know all these guys they sing on each other's tracks and they're all homies they all hang out together um, it's like a big scene you know and so i'm kind of like the uh wise uh yeah back in my day we had warp tour you know yeah um, making like that era of music with these guys who definitely like grew up like liking that music and and being fans um of that scene you know, they never like, went you know, to, they never changed. went to Warp Tour. Come on. Music change. Yeah, exactly. Warp Tour and scene music and Fuse and, you <laughs> know, it's all the good, like, uh, that era of scene music, you know, this the whole good old days. is about like keeping really strong and pure to that vibe in that era. Yeah. yeah. The good old days, as I call it. Yeah. I mean, good old, best time of my life. I, I don't want to, I don't want to get dark, but I'm going to tell you for a quick second, I stopped doing this for three years. You know why? Why? I ran out of rock bands to talk to because there were none. I know. You should have switched over to rappers. I, I didn't know. I wasn't I informed. They're all, they're, it's like, you know, the world kind of moved. Bands kind of went on, uh, not hiatus, but they just kind of became more boutique. Okay? Yeah. And then, and you still have huge bands, of course. I mean, let's not be too no, about it. Yeah. But then, uh, but then, but then, a lot of the hype and the talk and a lot of the movement where everyone's talking and into this stuff, it really went into like, you know, rap and EDM. Um, no, it changed for sure. I mean, I used to have two shows a week. I used to have to turn bands away and tell them come back in a week or two. It went from that to not being able to find anybody in town. Don't disrespect him, dude. Ha ha ha. I like that. Who are we disrespecting? Um, no, nah, he's. <laughs> But, you know, so after three, after three years, now that we're quarantined, I'm back. Because I'm like, you know what? I want to come back, but I want to have fun. So I've only been interviewing people like you that I, I already know. So I can have, like, a fun conversation. It's like dudes chatting, you know? 
Yeah, no, when you said you were back, I was like, yo, I want to do this, even if I didn't have a project back. No, it's just fun. Let me jump in. I want to get some time in. No. Because we haven't vibed in a while. That, that's things. what I've been doing. Every about. interview I've done since March, it's either someone I know like you or like a band I've always wanted to talk to, but I was never able to get them on the show. Like I did Get Up Kids last week. And I did Chris and Less and Jake. Like I love those bands, but I was never able to have them on the show. But besides that, it was like Ryan Seaman was on and Bayside were on and people that I know because it's more fun. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's too awkward to pitch to, like, some band who doesn't know me now. Like, hey, I have an Instagram show, because, like, everyone does right now. Were you doing more of the scene interviews back in the day, or were you getting the, like, uh, Get Up Kids, Less Than Jake vibes? Uh, I tried to expand. I don't yeah. know. I had everybody for a while. One, one day would be All Time Low. The next day would be, like, yeah, like, you know, like Real Big Fish. I just did it all. That's cool, yeah. yeah it, I miss that, that era where, like, a lot of the bands were kind of intermingling. Yeah. The styles were a little different. No, there was puzzle, a scene. Puzzle Warped were, honestly. But. Oh, and for all you young people watching, after this interview, if you go on a YouTube and you look up DJ Ross Star, and then from first to last, I think there's like seven videos of us on there from like 10 different days. Yeah, it's a blast from the past. We have interviews from my apartment on there, you and I. We have ones from some venue you played that I came to see you play at. There's a bunch on there. What venue is that? I don't even know. I have to read it. Whiskey, Roxy, something. It was like a party, I think. Tight. Who knows? But that was the past. We're talking about the present. So let's keep talking about the new project. Keep sending your questions if you have questions to ask. Uh, oh, you wanted to play some snippets, too, of some stuff. That's pretty cool. I want to play some stuff. I don't know how it'll sound through the phone, but you should try it. You want... Can you tell me? Can y'all tell me if you can Play one it? right now. Let's get him excited. Let's, see, let's just see if we can hear something. It's coming through my Alexa speaker. So who knows? I'm playing from Jared's MacBook Pro. I'm not scared. <laughs> Big hook. Should I play it? I'll play it second. That's all I'm going to play that one. Um, let's see what else we got. This is a rock. This is rock. There's no rap in this band, you're saying? No, this is all completely dedicated to... Like that FFTL, Senses Fail, Silverstein era of music, you know? And people still love that, and they're still thirsty for it, so. They are. Actually, like, some of my favorite shows at the venue have been uh, some bands from back in the day getting back together and playing shows again. What, what name some of the ones you've seen that you, that you did that for? There was, um, um, not Forever the Sick it's scary kids scaring kids with oh yeah on vocals that was at such an epic show and um therefore i am was really badass um i don't know there's been a lot we've we have a lot of shows I my job at the venue is i do like handle all the production and i manage all the operations so like it, they all kind of start blurring together so mature of you i'm so impressed yeah no it's cool um I have a great team. I have an amazing, wonderful staff here. But I think we have the best staff in L.A. Like, we let you scribble on our bathroom walls. You got to love us. That's cool. So what was the last show you had there before you had the shit? Last show we had um, – last big show that was noteworthy was Refused. What? That's huge. Yeah, and that was, a, that was an epic show. Who are you? That was, like, <laughs> right when – it was almost like I was – I was worried that that show wasn't going to happen because I think maybe a day or two later they canceled all the tours. Yeah. I keep, I keep telling this story every week, but, but my, my, my buddies went to three eleven day. That was like from March 11th to March 13th. And I think that was like the last big show on earth. March 13th was the last night. Yeah. That's kind of ended it all. I think our last show was March 11th. Wow. Yeah. So, How sad. Yeah. It was sad, but we'll be back. Hopefully, uh, people won't have to wear hazmat suits. 
Have like, you watched any live shows yourself on here? Like other people performing or no? Not yet. I watched a little bit of Post Malone playing those Nirvana covers. That was cool. Um, I've seen a couple homies do some DJing. Um, we were talking about, like, you know, if it's really, like, going to be to where there's no bands playing until next year, like, no shows until next year, yeah. that uh, we may we may try to do a live stream for If I Die First, like a performance. Or That's uh, a cool way to debut it. Like, you've never played a show, but you're going to let – but as long as it will – We're going like, to wait we, for it, though. Like, yo, if we're not coming back, yeah, we'll do that. But if we if we can wait and play a real show, that's obviously what we want to do. Maybe at the, at the drive-in, one, if they do that here. Yeah, that'd be sick. Wait, they are gonna have drive in at the drive in with cars. They're gonna have at the drive in movie theaters back. You can just play that. I don't like any of that. It's too much carbon monoxide. Yeah, you're really anti carbon monoxide tonight. I don't know. It just like about there. It's because I many years I drove a scooter. Ah. It's, I stopped driving a, a scooter around like a moped because of all the uh, what I was breathing. In. I was I was thinking about like yo, I'm just breathing in everyone's exhaust. This is terrible. If you just tuned in, this is Travis. He's now in the band If I Die First. Are you doing vocals also? Um, I'm doing some backup vocals, yes. And a couple of like, screams here and there. I'm doing vocals. We're kind of all doing vocals. I would say that Lotus and Zubin are for sure the lead vocalists. And then Ned kind of takes second place for lead vocalist because he's got some big parts. And then I'm just kind of filling up the blanks and layering in my voice and just kind of the glue i'm the glue i feel like i'm the glue you know that's good these dudes are all really talented and uh they deserve to have a kick-ass band and i was there to facilitate so i'm so do you, what, do you guys do you like covers when you're practicing like a certain cover you play every time um that's a good question not really we've only jammed twice oh wow yeah Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, we've only jammed once. Even more wow. Yeah, yeah. And um, and we were going to jam again, but then uh, we were worried that our drummer may have coronavirus. Um, so did, he ha- did he have it? We don't know. Is he sick now? He's, he's saying, he, I don't know, you know. I don't know. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have the final word. We're, you know, we're just sending our prayers out. He did say he wanted to live stream uh, grilling, so I think that that is a good sign for his health. Grilling like his teeth or like cooking on a grill? Oh, yeah, like cooking. Yeah. Uh, I don't know with you kids in your 2020 20 music. It's a, he'll probably be up after me, actually. <laughs> um, oh, we got Matt in real life in the house, and I blog a lot. Awesome. Tight. Familiar okay, faces. That... Says. Oh, where did Paxson said, what 2000 scene vocalist would you compare Lotus to? Hmm. He's like a mixture, you know, it, it's crazy because, you know, Lotus has a sick voice and he is definitely singing a lot and he has an amazing singing voice. But I think people are going to be very surprised at how much screaming he does and how like uh, good his scream is. It kind of reminds me of how Under Oath was able to do so well with a lead screamer, you know? Yeah. Like his scream is just appealing it's a because typically you're like oh, harsh vocals. I don't know if that's gonna you know whatever. <laughs> harsh. But his scream sounds really good, so he's doing a lot of singing and screaming. And um, pa- Paxson said, "Sunny and Vic." I guess Vic Fuentes. Sunny and Vic. I would say like, uh, like Craig and Sunny and and Spencer scream. Kind of I don't know mixed together, but it, but Lotus has his own thing. When I, every time I listen to it, I'm like, yeah, it gives me that vibe of that era. But it's hard to put a pin on, like, oh, he's this guy and this guy. Because he has his own everything, you know. And oh, yeah. I've recorded a lot of people, like, um, and been in the studio with a lot of singers and streamers. And I was, like, really impressed. I was like, dang. Like, I'm a streamer. I've been streaming for a while. And we started streaming. I was like, oh, my God. This guy's got a sick scream voice. It's really rare to say that. Like, dude, you have a sick scream voice. Yeah, like, you're out, really scre- out screaming each other like a contest. I'm not even going to compete with them. But I maybe have them on the low screams. I had to develop those when I joined a metal band. I was like, all right, I got to get a guttural. Um, but, you know, he's got that screamo scream. That's his, like, main bag. Someone said you look like Ryan Gosling. Are you talking to me or Travis? Because I've gotten that before, and I don't see it. But I want to know who they're talking about. Ryan Gosling. I can't even see your face, Travis. You're, like, in the way of the chatters. Maybe you should move over a little bit. You can't see me? 
There you are. You're like you're like cover like you're covering where the Chad people are, like your face. Oh, I see what you're saying. Your handsome face is being covered, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. Wow. Um, a way bigger phone. You know, the last time I saw Sonny was when I had Skrillex play DJ Raw Star Fest. You know about that? No. Oh nine or two thousand ten before he like went big when he was like first testing the waters. My old publicist got him to DJ Rostock, which we had out in Thousand Oaks. I think there was like 500 people there. Or no, there was like probably 100 people there. But we had like a ton of people watching on Stick'em, like 5,000 on there. But I think that was like one of his first official shows, like being Skrillex. That's tight. Who knew? Yeah. At Rostock. Yeah. That's cool that you can kind of like be like, yo, I'm one of his first shows. And then I never saw him again. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I I bump into him from time to time. Um, I went grocery shopping the other day, and he was jogging around the Arts District. And I was like, yo, dude. And we all had masks on. So he was like, yo, you know, like, who is this guy? Like, <laughs> I'm ready to fight like, you. Argh! And he's like, and, uh, but you can't see me. I'm like, hey, it's me. It's me. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I have a mask on. He's like, Amazing. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, um, I, sorry. The, the critics have spoken. I look like Ryan Gosling. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. That's good. I think he had a mustache in a recent movie, he too. I like an actor. Hmm. Maybe that's my calling all along. You get into acting, maybe. Who knew? Like a, a new Chevy Chase. Craig Robinson lives in my building. Maybe I should ask him for some tips. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. He's a cool yeah. guy. Um, where are you living now? You're in downtown by the studio? Yeah, I live uh, close to my venue downtown. Um, been same place for a while now. I had no idea. See, we lost total touch. I did not even know. I, I go down there all the time to get my Howlin' Rays hot chicken. And my little oh, jewel, and my little thing. jewel Cajun food over there, always Fish down there. Pie. Oh, huh? that place on Fifth Street. What's that? The Cajun place? No, mine's on Ord. On Ord. This guy is from New Orleans. He imports all the ingredients every Monday. He flies them over from New Orleans. Real it's yummy. KB yummy. says, Travis, you sound like Bill and Ted when you talk. Huh? Thanks. Are you in part three? Is this a big, the big reveal for your acting career? I, I wish. That would be um, great news because that would mean I'm even busier in life. Um, Travis, let's, let's hear another clip of another track. I can't wait any longer. You want to hear another clip? Let's hear another clip then. And Ollie said I look like Gallagher the comedian. What a great compliment. What a wonderful world we live in. I love that. Yeah. Good vibes. They um, got Chiodos in there, Sleeping with Sirens, Bullet for My Valentine. All the greats, you sound like. All the hits. That's great news. That is exactly what we were aiming for. See, that wasn't even... I was always too heavy for me. I was the pop punk kid, but I can respect it. I respect it. You know it. what? You, you saw all of us screamo bands come up. So yeah. You definitely know that music. You guys were all really nice. Like, all, all these bands are mentioning came on my show at one point or another, and everybody was always really cool. That's what's up. Are you going to keep the show going, you think? Eh, I don't know. I mean, I guess while we're stuck in quarantine. I mean, are you stuck, stuck in quarantine? Or are you, like, you, you're not working right now? You're just, like... Well, I'm working from home, but, I mean, nothing I like to do is open, so there's nowhere to really go. I go for, like, walks around the neighborhood... Or like, you're, you're doing the same thing here. if you look at my Instagram, I posted, I went to Venice Beach one day and walked around. I went to like uh, some Franklin Canyon Lake. I do like the hour walk every couple of days, take some pictures. But like, why not? I like doing this. Why but not? Like, you, I, may, I, may, I may have to uh, 
talk to you and Zubin and get some recommendations on who to talk to because I don't know a lot of these newer bands coming up. So once I run out of my uh, arsenal of old bands, I'm going to need somebody new. You will need someone new. Like, uh, like uh, it's hard because on Instagram, if people don't follow you back, they never see your message. So I wrote to, I wrote to like Hawthorne Heights and Silverstein I actually wrote to, and they never wrote back because they never saw the message. I can see if they've seen it and they still have it like weeks later. You got to get them on. I'm going to help. I'm going to be like uh, your brother. Help me. I was supposed to get Bowling for Soup on, and he said, let's do it, and then he never wrote back again, so that never happened. Bowling for Soup, you know, uh, the big guy. Yeah, well, there, the there's, there, well, the singer's big now, too. Oh, I, well, you know, good for him. Yeah. Um, but, like, uh, <laughs> the guy who, the guitar player that was big. The OG yeah, big guy. One of our guy. first FFTL shoots, we, uh, we had him get naked and wow. lay in, like, a, uh, and lay in, like, like, a shallow lake. And we're just standing around acting like he's not in the picture. I don't know. Where is that? Where can we see that? I, I, I don't know if I can even find it. It's so old. We took it on work tour. <laughs> weird. Yeah, was he I, totally naked I or look not? for our photo shoots because we did some weird photo shoots. And it's like, I can't find them all. I, I should have done better at saving uh, images. You know? my, my, my biggest regret is I, I didn't. I wasn't big on YouTube back in the day. All my shows were on Stick'em. And when Stick'em shut down, they all disappeared. Like, that that, like hundreds of interviews. So if you go on YouTube and search me after everybody watching, you'll find some good ones. There's Katy yeah. Perry on at my house, All American Rejects over here, Boys Like Girls, you, Travis, but not like 500 other interviews I did. They're all just gone forever. But now, because I'm now that I'm a responsible adult, all these interviews are on YouTube. So if you go look at this up after, uh, Less Than Jake's on there, Atari's, Get Up Kids. Who else have I talked to? Ryan Seaman, Ghost Town, um, Valley Who, a couple other ones. I've done like probably 11 of these so far since I started. Crazy. That's a lot. 11 yeah. A lot. Two a week. Tomorrow, Telly's on from Word Alive. That'll be fun. He's a Who good guy. Who did have one back in the day from All American Rejects? Oh, Tyson came over with Nick and they played like five songs acoustic. That was really exciting for me. That's sick. I love Tyson. He's doing acting now, actually. Real acting. Not oh, I see. Like I saw I was it. Was, uh, what was the show I just saw? Preacher. On? Yeah. Yeah, he's sick. He plays Jesus, but, uh, you know, mentally disabled. No, he he was really, he was always really nice to me. One of those guys where when I first started the show, like literally like in 03, 04, you know, he did, he did the show. He came, like he did an interview with me at the venue. He wore one of my old Raw Star shirts on stage that night. He's a good guy. Yeah, yeah, he is a good guy. I, I buddied up with him when we did that Fall Out Boy tour together. And um, we hung out a lot. But he doesn't follow me on Instagram, so he'll never see my message either. That's all we got to fix this. Yeah, I don't think you I, I think maybe you follow me on Twitter or something. It sucks. Like, you spend a lot of time with people, but truthfully, it's like I was very behind the scenes. Like, I didn't make tons and tons of, like, uh, best friends back in the day. From, But I was, yeah. I mean, I was cool with everyone, and we were all homies. But it was just like I was so busy running our band, and, like, my head was so in it, like, it's weird, like, when I was on your show back in the day, my headspace is, you know, we're older now, obviously. Yeah. But my headspace is, like, completely different, you know? Um, well, you let the hair, you, you let your natural color kick, and you had dark black hair back then. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for sure, but definitely it was just, like, all I could think about was, like, uh, pushing from first to last to whatever next step was well, there. if you watch those videos later, you're in the you're the closest to me. You could see you were the, the spokesman. Like it's a, oh, it's always you, and then Matt, and then Derek, and then you know it goes in that order when you were always yeah. the show. I, I think part of that is because you know at the end of the day, we all were kind of like really nerdy. Like we we didn't like get off on being super popular or anything. And so I was like, yo, I don't want this to be awkward. Like I want them to feel comfortable. So I would jump in and try to like use yeah. my uh, South Georgia gift of the gab they call it the ability to you know converse that's why I, and really that's why as soon as you wrote me on twitter i said wait you have a band again we gotta we gotta make this happen immediately yeah it felt right man i was like yo dude like dj raw star again if i die first it's a whole new era so it's like it makes sense so is there any tentative release date for anything or it's up in the air uh it's up in the air right now but the most tentative it can get right now is we're trying to aim for as soon as possible. Like the latest would be like end of June. Okay. Early July would be like the latest, but we're working to try to get this thing out ASAP because um, 
there's just a vibe to like us finishing it and how quickly we wrote it and how e we want to like just finish it and get it out there you know and who would be putting this out we're just gonna self-release it oh, okay yeah are you are you connected to a label or not yet not yet no i mean obviously like epitaph is the homies and, and uh you know lotus has signed to epitaph um so i mean i'm sure that we'll talk about stuff but we just wanted to hurry and get this one out and we may even just because there's no shows going on and we're limited on what we can do, we may start yeah. writing like a second EP. Since it's not a full, we're just kind of focused on EPs. Um, yeah, you can't get to. They want to know about physical release. You can't really do that yet. Physical. I mean, we could we could release some vinyl and stuff. We probably will. I imagine. You know, all the guys in the band are very. Uh, in a sense, DIY, like not not DIY, like old punk rock kind of like so yeah the dental floss but you know if, if we need to get merch printed or make some records or something we'll probably just do it i imagine this release will be pretty proper uh because everyone's pretty talented and knows what they're doing you know for sure let's yeah. play another clip you want to hear another clip i sure do let's see what we got um do 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 can now, tell us what the can you tell us the name of the song or no um Nah, I'll leave that. All right. Anonymous song. That'll, that'll anonymous clip number three. We've been, well, not, we, yeah. we've been like, uh, we've been, you know, um, putting clips out so people can hear what's up. Anonymous clip number three, then. Anonymous clip number three. Let's see here. Travis Acoustic. I don't think that's happening. Travis Acoustic. Good. Well, you have the acoustic near you? That might happen next. No, we, we will have an acoustic track on this album, though. Maybe Ryan Gosling will play the next Superman. Maybe he will. You don't know. You don't know. Nick Cage was almost Superman. Anything could happen. I'm trying to see which one is which. Look at Travis's thinking face. So <laughs> I think this is the instrumental. That's the instrumental. Beautiful. They said That's Emily cool, vibes. Huh? Emily vibes. Emily things. remix. I like that. Um, let's try this one. I have so many bounces. Zubin said, cool. "Turn it up. Turn it up a bit." All right, let's do that right now. The drumming is tight AF. That snare is dope as H. That was my, that's my, that's almost my vibe. That's like new fan glory vibes almost. Yeah. There's some pop punk action going on, but you know, bang and screamo to me is literally a combination of pop punk and like metal or like, you know, grindcore or whatever screaming music, you know, you can actually pick from any screaming music, black metal, metal, grindcore, it doesn't matter. Death metal. Grindcore. I love these names. So funny to me. Grindcore. But then you mix it with the pop punk and you're like, yo, that's a vibe somehow. I don't get it, but it is. No, I like that. That was more my that was more my speed. Yeah. So I was never a big screamer. I I I love Story of the Year because they did minimal screaming, but it like worked for their songs in my Yeah, opinion. Story of the Year, man, those guys are great. I miss those guys. They put out a record two years ago called Wolves, and it's one of the best albums I think I've ever heard from any like rock band. That's sick. I'm gonna make you listen to it later. It's called Wolves. The whole I'll album is like it. insane. I've been listening to so many uh throw throwback bands lately, just kind of all that music trying to like get my head like back in the game like remembering all the stuff we used to do and all the tricks we used to do like to put in the music you know yeah and so, um, that's the best time i miss all i miss uh, everything you're saying i miss i miss fuse and then the ap magazine when they you know every, all yeah bring thing. fuse back i mean honestly we're working on this band and i'm like i can't imagine a reality where if i die first is not headlining main stage or, or on one of the hype stages, you know, like, we yeah. come out, 
and it's one of the smaller, like the middle stages, not the main stage, but the one right before it on Warp Tour. And it's yeah. like people are hype. Like no. I, I can't, I can't imagine a world where that doesn't exist. Like this music is is supposed to have that vibe. Well, that's why you can't. That's why you, you can't. Together. You can't play like a live show with this until people can like be in the crowd together because it wouldn't be the same like feeling and emotion if you're just like watching six feet apart. Yeah, I mean, well, that's a whole other can of worms. You know it's what like, I mean? It's like Warp Tour died, and we can't even hang out anymore or go to a concert. No, I, right. I, I, I was saying I had I had a nightmare two nights ago where I went to see Green Day and there was all seats, and I was like, so even in my dream, I was into waiting board. Yeah, nah. I just I was like, what are, what are these seats? We were supposed to have Green Day play at the venue this year. What? Uh, for a small show and what? It was literally uh it got confirmed and then canceled it wasn't canceled because of corona but it was close I, we were all like looking at it like that's too crazy i don't think it'll actually happen and it didn't because it is really crazy that's but, close though you got close close got close yeah we've had some cool people come up in here like tony hawks rolled through here and uh jack black has been here a few times he likes wait, wait. the venue Jack Black has, like, literally, like, showed up at the end of a show. Like, the band's playing their last song, and they're done. And he just beelines to the merch and is buying, like, all this band's merch. Like, a metal band. You That's know? awesome. Yeah. Sorry. Like, I, I'm still like, laughing because I, I was picturing Tony Hawk literally rolling on a skateboard into the venue when you said that, rolling to the venue. Yeah, right. Yeah, I guess that probably <laughs> <laughs> made that too easy for you. That's cool. Jack Black. That's a big one. That's a big name. Yeah, he was cool, man. Um, you got Black. celebs up in there. Yeah, it, we did, like, this one part. We did, like, one of, uh, what was it? I uh, can't remember his name. He always has the birthday party. What? He's a, he's this comedian. He always has a birthday party, and his name is Escape Me right now. What do you mean, birthday party? Andre. Oh. Uh, Eric Andre. Yeah. So we had Eric one. Andre's birthday party the first year we opened, and because of that, like, literally, like, a ton of celebrities rolled in, and, um... That was the first time Jack Black came in, so I guess he like discovered the venue through there, and then he kept coming back because he was like, "That's cool." Who knew he was such a metal fan? Well, I guess he kind of knew, but that's still exciting. Yeah, um, I mean, if you watch Tenacious D of the Pick of Destiny, you know what he likes. Yeah, yeah, he he likes all that stuff. Um, let's see. We only got like less than ten more minutes. Want to give us one more clip before we answer some more questions? I don't want to. I don't want to leak too much more. Or do you want to play? play one, I'll play one that I already played again. Yeah. Because I feel like, you know, maybe there's different people that haven't heard it. This one is, I mean, Ned wrote them all. So I'm sure his opinion is always going to change from day to day. But this is his favorite one, he says. So I'll play this one again. <laughs> Welcome back. How do you get? This is Batata. Hey, 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 mama. There you go. See look, it? Look at his cat. She's got a little shirt on today. Yeah. Cute. Yeah. Looks like a toucan colored shirt. So yeah, man. I feel like you got the gist of it, pretty much. The rest is still unwritten until this is over. It'd be cool to for you to keep this going and to do another one um, after we release. Yes, and there's something more, no, more to talk about. Yeah, more songs to play. We can jam more music and um, probably have like a music video. Maybe we could like yeah. debut a video or we can talk about it. So we'll figure something out. That'll be fun. No, I'm still going to do it. I have no plan to stop. Now, now that like L.A. summer is over, what else am I going to do? It's looking like that. It is. I mean, 
Look, I got Telly tomorrow, Word Alive. I, I don't have him booked next week yet, but I'll get there. One week at a time, I do. I'm going to book you. I'm going to hit up some, some people. You know, like, legit people, so I trust you. You could also do some people that are adjacent to, that you don't know about. You should do stuff where you're like, I don't know about this, and ask them a bunch of questions. I don't care as long as they're nice. That's why That's why I started with everybody I already know that's cool, so I knew that there would be, like, good conversations. It wouldn't be kind of, like, an awkward... You know, a lot of bands I had over, I had never met, and sometimes it was just boring, honestly. I mean, you're not boring, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I could see they that. Give you the, they give you the quick answers. You're like, why did you even agree to this? Like, oh, tell me about your craziest tour story. Oh, I don't know. Oh, where can we find out more about you? MySpace. Oh, uh, what bands did you want to tour at Living or Dead? Nirvana. Just, like, no enthusiasm. You could also, like, maybe, like, do a podcast or something, too. I don't know. I don't like be podcasts. On Spotify. People ask me that all the time. I don't. I don't know why. I don't like. I don't like. I like the live thing. I like this live. Anything can happen. You know? Was it stickum or stick ham? I think it was stick ham, but I say stickum. Okay. I remember. I remember was... the, they were like the little HD cameras and everything. No, it was like... great. The, I did a show the last night. They were in business with the ready set. There was like sixty thousand viewers. It was so exciting. Why did they go under? Who knows? Because the scene was over, probably. True. Why did but anything yeah, they go were under? Like one hundred percent in the scene. You and I, we just can't, we can't let go. I told you three years, I didn't do any live interviews. I did a few for my friend's page, like, uh, you know, like filmed on location, but that was it. But then I was like, oh, I didn't even realize there was a split screen. I, I was told this. I'm like, wait, what? You can do split screens now? Oh, let's, let's do some interviews. I didn't yeah, even know it was an it option. Because like, at first, honestly, Instagram Live, this killed my show and shows like mine. People no longer needed to go to my studio because they could just go live anywhere they wanted. Yeah, so, and also people... Uh, bands started uh, showing more behind the scenes on their yeah. own. But, um, and so there's less of like, and if a person wants to see someone live stream, they'll just go watch them live stream. You know? But I like, I say I like this because it's a conversation. Some people can pull it off themselves, but others just go, they just look down they read the questions slowly. And it's not, it's, it makes it weird. A lot like, of oh, that. I watch like, like, like uh, I think Doja Cat, this, she's a singer, but she's really good at live streaming. And, it's a mix, right? She's doing some hair brain off the wall stuff that's like fun to watch. And she's also like reading comments and, you know, answering people's questions. Yeah. I also try to, I'm also trying to get people that maybe don't go live ever or not that often. So it makes it like exciting. Like I had Atari's last weekend, which I love. And there actually were a ton of people. I was worried because he goes live like 10 times a week, but people still tune in. So that was good. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, well, before we wrap it up, I'll plug that, and then we can talk for a few minutes until it kicks us off. So thank you guys for tuning in. Like I said, if you're watching this for the first time, I'm doing this now Wednesdays and Thursdays at 5 West Coast time. Tomorrow, The Word Alive will be on. If you like uh, these kind of bands, you probably have heard of The Word Alive. Good band. Um, Telly. Yeah, go on YouTube, Sorry. look up DJ Ross Star. You can find all the interviews I've done on here the past few weeks, and a lot of the old ones, like I said, with Katy Perry, Julia Lewis. All American Rejects, they're all up on there on YouTube. Uh, also, Women in Stereo, it's a great Instagram page to follow there in the chat, at Women in Stereo. But uh, yeah, other than that, I still love music, and I, I was still going to shows actively. It can never leave you if you really love music. I'm sure you agree. Yes, I do agree, and I can't wait for shows to come back. All right, you have a minute and 10 seconds. You have the floor. Tell them all the links they need to check out. Um, follow us on Instagram. You're already doing that probably and on the Twitter, and just be on the lookout for our EP. It's going to hit soon, sooner than later, probably sooner than the end of June. Amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing this, and this will be on the page now for like 24 hours, and then on YouTube tomorrow. Hi. I'm glad you uh, – let's end with your uh, mask. Put your put your attire back on. Yeah, we'll end it with the, uh, the look. Let's end it the way we began. And also – all you guys need to follow me on Instagram right now and also message me and tell me who the heck I need to get on this show because you might know artists that I've never even heard of before. All right, man. Before it kicks us off, thank you again. Thank you all for watching. Have a good night.